Hello and welcome to a very important installment in our Masterclass series, How to Navigate Your Way to Net Zero. Joining us today is Cool Planet's very own CEO, Alan Kyo, and our Head of Product, Keith O'Reilly. Cool Planet has released a groundbreaking new tool called the Net Zero Glide Path, which allows large organizations to visualize their path towards net zero and understand the actions and steps needed to get there. As always, if you have any questions or queries afterwards, please email me at dean.brown at coolplanet.io. And without further ado, enjoy the masterclass. So, thanks for the introduction. So, the glide path. Um, Alan, what's the glide path? So, <clears throat> the glide path is uh, the newest feature of, of our platform, Cool Planet OS, uh, that we're really excited about. Uh, we've been uh, building it for the past couple of months, and in some ways, it's kind of a capstone on all the deep functionality that's already in the platform that puts a, a nice capstone on top of all the data and analytics that's there to be able to allow customers to see multi-year views about their carb decarbonization glide path that they're on and or that they need to get on and how they deliver that glide path. You know, what opportunities need to be delivered by when, what's the carbon savings associated with them, how do they deliver them, and all the background data that comes with that as well. So all the analytics and dashboards to allow you to actually implement the opportunities. Great. And I can remember when we were kind of whiteboarding it and we decided that this could be a really important feature. Can can you think why what really resonated for you in terms of its value for clients? And uh, why do you think it's so important? Well, just the, the visualization of the path that you're on. You know, everybody, you know, all these big complex multinational companies are are setting targets now, which is great. It's one of the uh, kind of weird byproducts of, of the pandemic is that, you know, a lot of these companies are getting very serious about setting targets for their their science-based target initiative aligned, you know, that 30% by 2030, 50% by 2030. Uh, but having all the data in one place to enable you to make decisions about what opportunities you're implementing and then visualizing the path that you're on, you know, are you, are you going fast enough? You know, uh, how do you set up your internal uh, processes? You know, when do you need to apply for CapEx? When do you need to do detailed design, engineering, etc. in order to be able to hit those those marks on the glide path that ultimately deliver the savings? Yeah, I agree. I think for me, what really uh, came through as we started to sketch out the concept and moved from, you know, the usual development process from, you know, low res wireframes to final designs was really it really stands as a way to, for a whole organization to really understand the progress that you're making and all of your opportunities together over a very long term view, as well as the individual components. So a term that we use in here is from plant room to boardroom, and it really does communicate that very well. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, what's also built into it, and obviously we have a roadmap to build more of this into it, but it's the social collaboration aspect. You know, it's not just one person who's creating the glide path, but as soon as it's created, you can pull, you know, all the various people who need to be involved to deliver on the opportunities yeah. into the process. Uh, and, you know, you, you, you're you sharing a, a picture in, in all, everyone's heads that one is required, you know, to to break down, I mean, it can be overwhelming for a company to say, okay, we have to reduce our carbon emissions by 50% in the next 10 years, you know, but when you start breaking it down and visualizing it and then assigning tasks in a, you know, collaborative manner, as well as accessing expertise, whether that expertise is from us as Cool Planet or, or internal expertise, it starts to remove a lot of the, the fear and the friction about, you know, our, we've set these targets, what the hell do we do now? Yeah, yeah and I think the, the interesting learning for me as well was, the fact that a lot of this expertise and knowledge exists within our clients, but it might be in silos. So this is a tool to kind of surface that up for people to collaborate, and then not just within that particular plant or within that particular business unit, but across that business. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, I suppose one of the things we come across a lot is as organizations get bigger and bigger, these big organizations, you know, information can be very siloed. You know, over the years we've seen it, you know, the boiler man, he used to operate the boiler house, is retired, he wasn't replaced. 
uh, or there's one boiler man left in some plant in the Czech Republic or something like that who's you know probably knows more about boilers than anybody in the organization. How do you, how do you access and scale that information across the you know a, a very complex organization with a hundred plants, for example? Yeah. Uh, and you know a lot of the opportunities are common, you know, so oxygen trim control of the boiler, installing an economizer, low down heat recovery. A lot of these opportunities are common across all the plants. Uh, there's some that aren't, obviously, but you know, if someone's done a project, how do you grab that information out of the Czech Republic and, and you know, circulate it to Brazil so they can they can without friction or minimum friction start to enable those projects themselves? Yeah, and you can also see, I guess, one one of the beauties of it is you can see who was involved in realizing that particular opportunity and the contribution they make. And if you're in a different office in a different geo. There's a chance for you to get in touch with that person and share some knowledge and get some expertise from them to help you replicate that so exactly yeah exactly and you know we've made it as simple as possible to say you know you can go into someone else's glide paths in a different plant see what they have you know maybe it's it's got across the company internet this plant to deliver it on their their targets you go oh that'd be great to know how they did that hopefully we can piggyback on that Go into their glide paths, see all the opportunities they've delivered, all the history behind those opportunities, all the dashboards they've built to, to, to enable those opportunities. And then also, you know, all the conversations and chats and people that were involved, you could duplicate them for your own plants and then, yeah. you know, kick on from there for your original opportunities. Yeah, and I think another very powerful element of it is that link with the with the data, the before and after picture. So I guess we're we're kind of built around that foundation of um, getting data from the dark corners of a plant, you, you know, connecting with sensors and meters and even files, pulling it together into uh, dashboards, uh, setting alerts of watchers. So somebody can really understand in a lot of detail what went into an opportunity. So I, th I think what I really found, found kind of exciting about it is the fact that you can go in deeper as shallow as you want in understanding where you are from a top level uh, target perspective right down to what difference a, a relatively small initiative is making in your overall decarbonization journey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the other thing to say is, you know, you could be on a glide path going into the airport and have to go do a go round. So yeah. if the weather's yeah. bad or, or whatever, and you know, it can't be assumed that, you know, if you've implemented a decarbonization opportunity that's going to continue to deliver, you know, optimizing refrigeration plants, for example, you know, people change set points back and they don't maintain new stuff that was put in and heat exchangers get fouled. So, you know, you may have saved 200 tons of carbon uh, on day one, but actually, you know, is that still there, you know, three months, six months later? Yeah. So to sustain that progress, you do need all the analytics and the data from the dark corners of the plants, suck it into the platform, and then you know implement the opportunity, take that box, but then set up watchers and alerts around, well, if it's yes. drifting from what it should be doing, I want to know about that so I can kind of jump on that as soon as possible. Really sustain it. Then. Sustain it, yeah. yeah. Sustain it is possibly more than half the battle, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, and even solar, which is, you know, Rooftop solar is relatively painless. You know, you put it on your roof, assuming your roof could take it, and there's no insurance implications. You plug it into a distribution board down below, but you know, it sits up on the roof, gathering dirt. You know, for the next yeah. two or three years, and the performance drops and drops and drops. But you know, so you can have the solar project on the glide path, implement it, delivers 300 tons of savings or whatever it is. And then you can set up analytics and watchers around, well, is it continued to perform and are we maintaining the glide path as opposed to going back up again? Yeah, and I guess the, the other beauty of it is there's an opportunity then to draw on our expertise. I mean, we have a very deep set of uh, subject matter expertise across our kind of engineering business. So there's a real opportunity to collaborate and draw on our resources if somebody really needs that expertise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, we've been in this business for 12 years implementing all kinds of decarbonization opportunities across fridge, compressed air, boilers, cogeneration plants, solar, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so we've a very strong bench, you know, of expertise that we've tried to make it as, as easy as possible in the platform as part of the glide path to access snippets of that expertise either through video format. Uh, yeah. So learn about an economizer and a boiler and how to implement it, but also dynamically 
talk to these people you know yeah if if, if you have a, an opportunity you want to implement you know to start on that journey you need to do some front-end engineering design detail design you can really quickly access that expertise through the platform and get support on that journey as well great so really looking forward to seeing how each of those opportunities aggregate up then from a cross plan perspective do we see um the tool being used in the the boardroom then how do we see an organization using it is it is it a way to verify how each plants are kind of performing against each other or each particular yeah facility? yeah uh, well number one you know we've set the targets are we on are we on track <laughs> for on yeah. those targets so again the glide path is very um quick reference on a plant by plant basis and then the next step will be consolidate that up to a regional or enterprise basis to see are you want you know set this glide path you know whether it's SBTI size based targets you know we need to de decrease by this amount every year or is our current trajectory above that you know it's a one second to kind of register that and go why are we not mm. below the below the target or on track with the target you know what do we need to do you know do we need to do another energy audit, identify new opportunities, you know, access some of that expertise we yeah. talked about, gather more data, um, kick off engineering design, kick off detail design, kick off, you know, implementation, etc. So it becomes a project management tool, you know, at a very high level, you know, if we, these companies need a PMO for decarbonization, you know, yeah, that's the target the business has set strategically you know are we are we on that are we on that track you know to, to make those savings and sustain them again you know and and it seems like those sorts of conversations are increasingly happening at a board there's obviously other stakeholders involved and shareholders i guess it's becoming front and center of a lot of companies thinking that very much so i mean there's there's lots of pressures um uh you know for customers ultimately especially you know companies who are kind of brands companies who have brands, consumer facing brands, yeah. they're they're on the forefront of consumers looking for for options and choices to, you know, try and be more sustainable in their purchases. Um and that that flows, you know, it takes time, but you know, there's suppliers to those brands, you know, lots of different kind of shapes and forms that it's trickling there to those people. There's, you know, increasing compliance requirements. There's, I think there's like 4,000 different rules and regulations and laws around the world about, you know, sustainability and decarbonization. There's cost, you know, in Europe, <coughs> the price of carbon is whatever it is, 90 euros a ton or 95 euros a ton today. That's adding significant cost into these organizations, which they, they need to get a handle on or hedge against in the future. Uh, and then there's funding. So these big multinational companies, they great once a year for a couple of hundred million in bonds and they're now paying more yeah. for those, that money if if they don't have a sustainability strategy and a decarbonization strategy than they were before and then i guess the, the beauty of it is there's as a product it allows that level of sort of board and stakeholder um uh, oversight right down to particular operational initiative at a plant level and how they're making it exactly yeah and our, our objective has been to make it as seamless as possible to zoom up and down you know yeah so from you know asset level in the plant to plant level to regional level to enterprise level you know so the asset could be a refrigeration plant in a meat factory the plant level could be the plant level and everything that's in the plant regional level could be 10 plants in that particular region the enterprise level could be 50 plants globally so the, the idea of the platform and, and, and this kind of enterprise structure is in the DNA of the platform is, is, yeah. is, is to allow access to those various different people at those, you know, so regional ops manager, plant manager, boiler room guy, uh, our, our person uh, up to, you know, the CSO at the board level for them all to be able to access the platform very easily, see what they need to see on a consolidated level. But if they want to zoom down to ultimately to the asset level yeah. or to the compressor level, they can do that very, you know, with a couple of clicks, basically. And I guess they can also understand where the expertise is in their organization and who contributed to a particular initiative that made a difference in terms of achieving those targets. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's part of a good culture. It should be recognition of those yeah. people, especially in a, what's becoming a much more strategic uh, objective is, you know, to, to 
decarbonize these enterprises. Yeah, and I guess you can you you could almost use a successful opportunity almost like as a template that could apply across an organization as well. Then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, so yeah, that back to that best practice sharing yeah. and, and knowledge sharing across the organization. As these organizations get so big over the years, you know that that um, best practice practice sharing culture and the continuous improvement culture is weakened. You know, yes. Uh, unless you're very very intentional about, and, and even some companies who are really intentional about it, they they, they don't succeed. You know, um, and the best practices don't get shared. You know, for 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 lots of different reasons. So one, one of the values that we saw um, in the light path is this concept of really driving the, that, the velocity mm. of decarbonization mm. opportunity. Mm. Um, how do you think that's going to, to happen? What's our, our vision for driving that velocity and how does the glide path help achieve that? Yeah, so the glide path and it's kind of supporting features and functionality, um, we, we see it already, you know, so, you know, to state the problem, you know, if you look at a typical large enterprise, you know, with 100 factories, let's say, <clears throat> up to now or up to recently, they, as enterprise like that, may have only implemented five energy efficiency projects or decarbonization projects a year. To hit 50% savings by 2030, that's going to be 200 a year or 300 a yeah. year. Yeah. So how do you, how do you go from five to, to 300? Uh, you know, how do you identify them? How do you develop them, engineer them, implement them, commission them, sustain them? It's a real big challenge, yeah. uh, especially for companies that, you know, they've lost a lot of engineering knowledge over, over the last years, you know, that the trend has been to, you know, cut middle managers and, and, and engineering staff and capacity and resources, etc. So, <clears throat> you, you know, you, these, these companies are now tasked with, you know, going from five projects a year to 300 projects a year. How do you scale that, you know? And, you know, there could be in those 100 factories, maybe 20, 30 heat pump projects. Uh, there could be a bunch of heat recovery projects. There could be compressed air sequencing in twenty of them. There could be boiler optimization in another thirty of them. So there's going to be commonality, albeit mm -hmm. every factory is going to be, you know, have its own path and route. And depending on the local conditions of, you know, how electricity prices and carbon prices and you know whatever geography they're in, it's going to drive different technologies. But there will be a lot of commonality and, uh, you know, really the intention of the glide path and the, the overall platform is to drive and scale that opportunity velocity. So that's a kind of key metric for us, you know, yeah. did the company go from two projects a year to 15 projects a year to 30 projects a year? Because ultimately you got to do projects and deliver opportunities in order to save carbon. Yeah. So everything is built around that, you know, being able to access the expertise at the right time, be able to do the engineering, have the engineering backed up by data coming in from the platform, being able to very quickly have a shared vision in everybody's head about what the glide path is and do we need to accelerate? Do we need to hire more external expertise? Do we need to hire more internal expertise? Do we need to add to our engineering core, uh, central and regional at a plant level? So uh, to really be kind of making the stark contrast as to, you know, so this is the plan. We're well, out, well away from the plan at the moment. We're gonna have to scale decarbonization velocity significantly by orders of magnitude, you know, yeah. so, and that requires capacity, expertise, data, uh, and a culture of, you know, continuous improvement as well as best practice sharing. So all that's built in and engineered yeah. into the platform. It's exciting. And, 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 Kind of a very important segment of our business is and growingly important or increasingly important is commercial real estate mm -hmm. so the same same model and principle applies right yeah yeah i mean like commercial buildings are full of boilers and chillers and yeah. you know uh, thermal systems and air handlers i mean a commercial building is quite similar to a, a pharmaceutical plant for example uh, okay pharmaceutical plant is regulated and validated rooms and all the rest but still <clears throat> you know, 75% of the energy going into a pharmaceutical plant is heating, cooling, or moving air around the place. Commercial buildings are pretty much the same. You know, so and it's simply that need for that that knowledge and subject matter expertise as well. Yeah, yeah, especially around the kind of area of, you know, if you want to make 
big impacts on decarbonization. Mm. You've got to electrify your heat supply. You've got to engineer heat pumps into your into your process. So you're going to figure out how to recover the heat to prime the heat pump and then pump the heat to a, a higher temperature and then re-inject that higher quality heat back into the process. So while the core heat pump itself is very scalable, very similar, uh, plant by plant, there's nuances about how you integrate that heat pump into, into the process, um, which again, all those learnings can be on the platform and, and shareable across the enterprise. The great thing about software as a service or, or cloud-based software is it's like paint the Golden Gate Bridge, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's, it's never over. It's never finished, so it's a continual journey. Yeah. What's, where do we, where can we go uh, as, 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 as product manager, head of product, yeah, you're but, the you're the holder of that vision. <laughs> so yeah, so I think we we've, we've built a very strong foundation in terms of sharing the knowledge and the expertise across an organization, and then through an organization using the glide path. And I think we're going to continue to build out on that 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 concept of sharing knowledge and expertise and facilitating collaboration within an organization. So I think what will that look like in terms of the product. So it could be tracking the actions, um, tagging uh, users and uh, tagging assets across uh, an opportunity. So really it'll be about kind of allowing that level of detail uh, to be even more fine grained. <clears throat> I think naturally you, you, you mentioned it earlier on, there's that sense of try to understand each one of these opportunities as a project. So inevitably, I think there'll be project management uh, functionality coming into the platform. So really tagging all the stages of the realization of an opportunity right from that light bulb idea moment down to the, to the individual tasks within that project. So I think that that's inevitably going to come in. But I think really, the, one of the, the big attractions for me uh, around the, the business and I think one of the kind of uh, values that we bring as a business is this uh, knowledge that we have and the expertise and that engineering knowledge that we have. And I think really what we want to do is, is make the most of that. So build out all of the assets that we have in terms of a knowledge base um, and really make it very easy for uh, a client to avail of the expertise that we have. Uh, be it, you know, in chat, consuming videos, understanding articles, but also making it incredibly easy for us to draw, for them to draw us into the conversation and to, to help them move forward our initiative. As we're so reaching the end of the masterclass, um, just, I suppose, one of the key takeaways, I think for me personally, um, using the glide path today with a real client, um, we were able to get up and running really quickly. It took, uh, you know, maybe 30 minutes once we had the targets and, and baseline set up. So creating the flight path itself. So one of the takeaways for me is user friendly. Uh, I would say that. Yeah. But what about you? What are your takeaways at the end of the last? Yeah, week? I agree. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's very powerful to be able to very quickly have a shared vision in the heads of multiple people, lots of people in a, in a factory to see the path that we're on and what we need to do and but to all, also have all the data at your yeah. fingertips you know that um uh, allows you to identify new opportunities and you know figure out where they're going to sit on the light path and when you can implement them and what needs to be done to implement them um as I, as i've said before um you know like to set expectations you know this it's not spotify it's not a consumer yeah. software or app where 30 seconds after downloading the app you can be playing a song you know it's more complicated than what you're trying to achieve than that you know it's not just playing a song but we've made it as easy as possible we've uh, made building analytics as easy as possible access to expertise access to your data as easy as possible so you have everything in the one place and really, for me, it's a 10x improvement over trying to scale decarbonization to the scale we talked about, you know, go from five projects a year to 500 projects a year, you know, scaling that without a platform or a tool like this and all the embedded knowledge and data, you know, it's going to be 10x harder, yeah. if not impossible, you know, to be able and, to And when you're at that, that sort of uh, scale, it really is a powerful way to allow you to collaboratively 
prioritise amongst those opportunities to see which ones are going to move the needle, yeah. which ones that maybe you change a timeline on or accelerate. Yeah. And, and that really, it's very interactive and almost instant as a tool. Very interactive. And also it kind of, uh, it drives, you know, as we were saying earlier, it's not just the big projects, big capex, yeah. have you. It's the operational efficiencies, the daily continuous improvement, you know, being able to tweak stuff, you know, sequencing on compressors, set temperature set points, and maintain, sustain the savings that come from, from those because it's all there at your fingertips. Um, the data, the, the analytics, the dashboards, the access to expertise, collaboration, um, you know, and on any glide path, you know, that operational efficiency should be a significant portion. It shouldn't be just, you shouldn't be just completely reliant on putting the heat pump in and solar, you know, they're very important parts of the, the decarbonization journey, but operational efficiency is baked into this as well, you know, to enable yeah. that daily focus and cadence on, on driving the plants harder, more efficiently. Right.